What is going on everybody? It is your boy Patman here back again with another video. Now in the past I've basically said, you know, stayed really positive with the news from Halo Infinite, especially when Tim Longo left. I remained positive and always said, hey, as long as Chris Lee is still there, I'm not so worried about Halo Infinite. Well, now Chris Lee has departed. The lead on Halo Infinite has departed the studio and it's really hard for me to remain optimistic or uh, on the positive side of things when it comes to this because this is this is big news guys so I'm going to give you guys my thoughts and opinions on this and I've also brought along my friend here that you guys know as my fellow co-host of the Halo Outreach podcast Mr. Kevin Kulex I figured this would be li we literally just did the podcast yesterday and this news came out this morning this would have been huge to talk about on the podcast but I really wanted to get a fellow super fans opinions on this and a fellow friends opinions on this and we wanted to discuss it with you guys so um yeah kevin basically me and you have we've both said this on the podcast before like yo you know yeah tim longo left all right yeah it's a little bit worrisome but there's still plenty of development time and as long as chris lee's still there halo infinite's in good hands you know like it's uh, we're, we're good to go uh, it's not the case anymore so i would um I will always be, I'll say this, I will always be excited for a new Halo release. However, I would be lying to you guys if I said I wasn't a little bit worried about the game now. Finally, I'm a little bit worried. All those rumors came out about the development of the game and, you know, all that good stuff about the development hell that Infinite was in and I didn't know if I really wanted to buy into it because there really wasn't much basis on it. But now that the lead of Halo Infinite has left and basically been pushed out, it's not like, you know, a lot of people might say, hey, you know, Halo Infinite is close to the end of its development. And, you know, a lot of this happens all the time where people will leave and move on to other projects. No, this this basically is Chris Lee getting pushed out after the whole debacle of the Infinite reveal. And that's that's worrisome to me. What do you think, Kevin? It's a. Uh giving me a heckin big concern right there yeah when <laughs> hearing chris lately like yeah like i said you and i have you know we've stayed we've kept an ear to the ground when it comes to the halo news and stuff like that we've you know we've seen when T tim longo left and mary olsen left you know mm -hmm. uh joseph staten coming in and stuff like that these kind of some more senior position shakeups coming in with halo infinite we're like yeah but you know these kind of things happen in general you know 343 is a very large studio they, you know, they have a right. lot of people. This is just one person kind of thing, which obviously, you know, those positions do matter a lot and they do affect things, but they don't send like ripples throughout the entire studio. This one, though, I feel like is doing that. This one's a major, major change. This is the captain behind the ship who is driving yep. this together. We, like you and I said, like, you know, as long as Chris Lee is still there, everything is fine, you know? Yep. <laughs> and now he left. Now, yeah, the ship is sinking and the captain's like, you know, screwed going down with the ship. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Yeah. <laughs> Save yourselves. Yeah, it's, oh man. Oh, geez. It's just, like I said, it's just a heckin' big concern for me right now on this. Yeah, he's been a studio head since 2016, man. It's not like it's some, like you said, you know, like, yeah, Tim Longo was a big deal too, honestly. Like, you know, he was a big part of 343, but at the same time, you know, n this is huge. This is almost like, bonnie ross or somebody stepping down you know yeah. from managed like this is a big part of 343's management which has been rumored you know i i really can't speak on it and i still don't know yet even with this that there has been some management issues at 343 um i'm not ready to say that yet because i don't have enough facts much like everything with halo infinite but you know guy who's been studio uh head since 2016 been with 343 since 2008 the inception. You know, back when Bungie was still doing, yeah, the back the, the initial inception of 343. So a founding member of 343. And um, according to the article by Jason Schreier, who is a known insider, um, and this has been confirmed by like Windows Central and stuff. So this is pretty legit stuff. Um, he quoted Chris Lee saying, I have stepped back from Infinite and I am looking for future opportunities. I believe in the team and I'm confident they would deliver a great game and now is a good time for me to step away. Which, when you take that for what it's worth, you know, just reading that, you're like, alright, yo, that makes sense. But then, later on in the article, uh, it they shed some more light on the whole situation. It says, the game was delayed in early August, which we all knew 
However, following the poor fan reception to an early public version, Lee's role was sidelined a few weeks later as Microsoft brought in Halo veteran Joe Staten to lead the single player campaign and another senior executive, which I don't rem remember really covering, uh, was Pierre Hintzzi to run multiplayer. I can't really pronounce that name. So that's that makes it seem like Lee was basically getting replaced by the whole Joe Staten thing. Like it says his role was sidelined and then Joe Staten was brought in. And I don't think that's coincidence. Um, you know, obviously Joe Staten is another pillar for the Halo franchise. He knows how to make a Halo game. He's been doing it since the, you know, inception of Halo. So that's, you know, that's maybe the silver lining, but at the same time, that's also really worrying that, that you know, that's where Chris Lee got sidelined was as basically um, as Joseph Staten came in. So it makes me think like, hey, Microsoft's just not happy with the direction, not happy with, um, you know, the fan reception. And that's when they said, all right, well, I guess we need a change. And that makes me once again think that Halo Infinite is a lot farther out than we anticipated the i mean and if it does come out in the fall of or in the spring of next year i'm really hoping it's not a rush job you, you see cyberpunk not afraid to commit to a date and then say yeah no more delays and then delay it again i hope 343 and microsoft have the cojones to do that and say you know if the game's not ready do not release this please like if halo needs to be pushed back into 2022 because it needs to totally get revitalized uh, I again <laughs> i hope not but i i rather have that than a crappy product you know True. something that's rushed but hey i mean it was a different era let's let's acknowledge that okay it's a lot tougher to make a video games nowadays but my favorite halo of all time halo 2 known development hell very known development hell from bungie and it's my favorite halo so you know there's hope for that Majora's Mask, my favorite game of all time, was made in a year. And, you know, like, but that's a different era of gaming. It is so much tougher to make a game. There's a lot of chefs in the kitchen, which we've said a couple times for Infinite. Um, so that makes it a lot harder to push out a unfinished product. So, or to actually get it finished in time, I should say. So that's, that's the most worrying part to me, that we might be even further away from Infinite and maybe that whole staggered release comes into play once again if say multiplayer is ready and they need to go back to the drawing board with joe staten and the campaign and really just perfect uh the because it, it really was a mess we me and you acknowledged that with the uh, with the reveal like we liked what we saw from the gameplay but the amount of pop-ins some of the textures like you could tell it was a very unfinished product and you know, I, I didn't blow it out of proportion like a lot of the community, like, oh my god, it looks like absolute crap. No, the game I thought looked pretty, but it was just from the technical standpoint of some, like I said, the pop-ins, the draw distance, some of the textures just looked really bland. And that was, that was an issue. And, you know, we thought that they would be working on that and get that fixed, but there might be more to it than that. So obviously Microsoft was not happy with the direction as a whole of Halo Infinite. And that's why Chris Lee was sidelined. Now, he remains a Microsoft employee. And while he stepped back from Halo Infinite, they appreciate all he's done for the project to date. That was from a Microsoft email. So, you know, there's that. He's still a Microsoft employee, but I don't think he's with 343 anymore, right? Doesn't sound like it. Right. So, really interesting stuff. You have anything you want to add to it? I want to give you your time to shine here and, and talk about it a little bit. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I would say this is there's two ways you can think about this. Either the game is in shambles and they're like, OK, we need the need a new captain in the ship because everything is busted, you know, or it could be the issue of this. Maybe just might be a business decision rather than like based on the game itself, because this was supposed to be Halo Infinite was supposed to be the game to sell Xbox consoles. This was supposed to be Halo's mm -hmm. time to shine, be their release day of a new console for the series x which has been setting itself up so well to you know succeed and that they knew that date was happening november release date for the console was happening and maybe just uh you know being too ambitious because i've always you know appreciated 343's ambition when it comes to making halo games but they think they i think they might sometimes bite off more than they can chew or just 
Agree. You know, yeah. Put too many, try to spin too many dishes up at the same time while balancing on a ball kind of situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it could be really just a business decision where like, you know, they, they knew this deadline, it was coming and they weren't able to hit it. And especially in business, when you don't hit deadlines, there are consequences. And this seems like to be that kind of consequence when it comes to that. Uh, so I think maybe more of a business decision rather than like based off the game itself. Obviously, we, what we've seen of the game being the the buggy kind of uh, demo, which and it's a whole look good. But when you actually step down and look at it, like the functionality of the game definitely needs some polish. And now with the recent coding uh, microtransaction stuff that we got going on right now for news cycle, it's just it seems like it's been like one hit after another since the August delay announcement. And it's just, yeah. man, it's just been rough. But though, when you mentioned about like Joseph Staten coming in though, and like taking over his position, I don't know necessarily believe that. Uh, just because his Chris Lee's position was in like umbrella position to just kind of make sure everything is lining up properly. Where Joseph Staten has always been very focused on narrative when it comes to game development as a whole. When it comes to Bungie, when he was with Halo. Or when he was mm -hmm. Halo, when he was with Bungie, and on Destiny, when he was with Bungie, he was like strictly like narrative lead and like a little bit of a creative director as well. But like, he wasn't like the studio head. Like that, there's right. a lot more that goes behind that. More like of uh, management of multiple different teams, and also budgeting, and also when it comes to communication with higher ups as well. His was more directly focused with the game, like hands on with the game development. Where I think Chris's mm -hmm. position was much more involved with like just overarching an overseer yeah overseer yeah. and make sure everyone's hitting their deadlines and stuff like that yeah I, I to clarify i didn't mean that personally i don't think that's what happened but it, it just kind of the way the article that jason schreier wrote he just says that lee's role was sidelined a few weeks later as microsoft brought in halo veterans joe staten so it just i don't know the way he worded that makes me think like Oh yeah, I maybe Joe that, Staten yeah. is leading the campaign because it says he's leading a single player campaign, and then they brought in somebody else to uh, head in the multiplayer. So maybe just Chris Lee's role has been broken up into several different roles in the studio by multiple people. You know, like almost kind of like what they did with Tim Longo. Like when he left, um, they they gave multiple. Like Mary Olson didn't actually you know take over Longo's position. She did something else that was kind of related to Longo's position, and I'm sure other people had to pick up the slack there. So. I don't know, it's definitely like a shakeup more than anything, I, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. And it's kind of unclear who the hell is the over... I mean, I, you would assume Bonnie Ross, obviously, she's the studio head of 343. You know, obviously, Infinite is the biggest project, you know, but they still got the Halo TV show and all that. So she's got her plate full. So it's going to be really interesting to see who the hell steps into that um, Chris Lee role. Because, like I said, we might still be a ways away from, from launch of this game. Sounds like it, man. Uh, it's... Yeah. Sad but I can see like confusion you're talking about with the uh, Joseph Staten thing, the way he worded it made it sound like Joseph Staten replaced him, and that's not right. the case. I think that was more of his interpretation that he wrote in without really having like right. solid facts behind that. Because he yep. came in back as like a narrative lead for Halo Infinite, if I remember correctly. Yep. And that's yeah, not yeah, that's, campaign, uh, that's not campaign a campaign yeah, lead. That's absolutely not a studio head. That's two completely different no. positions and very different responsibilities. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so, yeah, that's a uh, man hecking big concern right now. Um, like the, it's still fr the news is still fresh. It's still a developing story. I mean, I know you and I will definitely continue on keeping up to date with uh, anything else yeah. that happens with this. If a new information breaks, I will definitely cover it for sure. Yeah, I think I speak for both of us. Like we're such big Halo fans that I, I don't I don't think you heard when I said it at the beginning, but like I will always be excited for a Halo game. Oh yeah, Sorry, but man. I'm definitely more concerned. Like I've always tried to stay on the positive side of things when it came to all this infinite news, and this was the first one that really made me raise my eyebrows. Like what? Mm -hmm. oh. You know, and it's like all right, now I'm concerned, a little bit concerned. Still excited for Infinite. Still really excited for Infinite, but now we'll just have to wait and see, man. There's a, we really can't judge the game until we play it. We sure. say all we want. I'm that type of person. I'm not going to judge anything until I get my hands on it and try it for myself. But definitely keeping a closer eye on it now and, and really mon monitoring the progress that the game is making and what kind of milestones it's going to achieve over the next few months. Hopefully we get some more information soon 
and hopefully, like 343's done in the past, they've done a good job of like alleviating the community's concerns. They're like, all right, here's what's false, here's what's right, here's what's going on, here's our plan. They did it with the whole staggered launch thing. They did it, they're doing it now with the codings thing. Unishek has been really active with feedback and saying, you know, how he's read it and giving some more information. So hopefully within the next few days, 343 can shed more light on this and hopefully alleviate some of our concerns. Of course, they're going to try to because it's a business and they don't want the product to be in a bad light. So of course, there's going to be a lot of business mumbo jumbo probably behind that. Like, oh, guys, don't worry. But hopefully I, I, I just read something or see something that really alleviates my worries. Uh, and that's really all I could hope for. True. That's all we can really hope for. It's, yeah. We just need some more information, man. Like it's more info. Yeah, you know, it's three four three needs to do something to kind of change the narrative right now because it's been super negative ever since really super honestly since negative. August. Yep. And they need to come up with some positive news, you know, showcase yep. what the game has to offer. <laughs> really. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Well, uh, I think that will bring us to the end of the video, guys. Thank you, Kevin, for stopping by and making another appearance on the channel. If you guys are interested in Kevin's content. All his links will be in the description down below. Highly suggest you guys go give him a subscribe on YouTube, a follow on Twitch, or a subscription on Twitch. That would really help him hey. out. And a follow on Instagram and Twitter as well, um, because we really stay active on there. If you guys really want the news right away, we're retweeting, we're tweeting out stuff as soon as we see it. And, you know, and then later making videos on the big juicy stuff. And like I said, we also run a weekly Halo podcast together, which the new episode would have been out today if it wasn't for this big news. So I'll probably release the new episode of the podcast tomorrow, I'll release this video as soon as possible for you guys to listen to. So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. And I hope to catch you guys on either a previous video of mine or a future video of mine until that time comes. I'm your boy, Patman, and I'm out. <laughs>